I have always wondered what happened to the old kingdom of Egypt, and it seemed to have died out in remarkable fashion. Egypt was at its height of its power during the 4th dynasty, and then by the middle of the 6th dynasty, a few centuries later, it seems to be in ruins, and there comes a first intermediate period where literally nothing is written or built in Egypt, and there is no history that comes out of this period, just scant little fragments. So what the heck happened here? But today we are going to explore maybe a partial cause or maybe a significant cause of the fall of the Old Kingdom, and this is just a possibility. Now, I have looked a little bit into ancient Egypt and the history and the text and the symbolism, but I have also looked into impacts, and that is one thing that has fascinated me since I started making videos. And in 2012, I even made a video where I said, maybe we had fragments of something hitting the North American ice sheet and melting it pretty much all at once. So this is something I've been interested in, but let's get into the topic today. Now this comes from the Ostracon, and I will leave a link below, but it is the Journal of the Egyptian Study Society. It says, did the Make Meal Meteorite contribute to the downfall of the Egyptian Old Kingdom? The remains of Old Kingdom root installations, particularly from the 6th Dynasty, have been found in the southwestern desert of Egypt, indicating well-established communication between Egypt and the southwestern territories. During the reigns of King Pepi I, Menera, and the first reign of Pepi II, these communications reached their peak when Yam, which according to recent discoveries located in and around the Jebel Unat region in southwest Egypt, became one of the major trade locations for Egypt. Harkuf, the well-known traveler of this period, directed four missions to Yam land, bringing important good. Suddenly, Yam no longer was mentioned on the trade list missions that were directed to the foreign territories. As the 6th Dynasty Egyptian government began to dissolve and collapse, we have the mention of goods being brought up to the Nile River locations of the Egyptian civilization up until the 6th Dynasty, and then all of a sudden it stops. It says, the reasons for the downfall of the Egyptian Old Kingdom continue to be a mystery. Both natural and social phenomena may have contributed to its collapse. A natural cause may prove a worthy contender. Could the Make Meal meteorite, which struck southwestern Egypt during the historical ages, contribute to the trade disturbance between Egypt and the southwestern territories and consequently weaken severely the last strong pharaoh of the Old Kingdom's authority? That is an interesting question to ask, and especially if the May Camille meteorite wasn't the only thing that struck that part of the desert, and we're going to get well into that towards the end of the video. It says, during the Old Kingdom, which roughly lasted 3200 to 2200 BC, it says Egypt achieved great accomplishments in various areas. Suddenly, following the Sixth Dynasty, a period of instability extended nearly 150 years. The reasons for this are not fully known. Scholars speculate about the main cause of the collapse. No doubt, a number of combined factors led to the Old Kingdom's demise. Wendy Christensen refers to natural hazards as the main cause of the Old Kingdom's ruin, as she states, while general disorder and the independence of local rulers helped bring about the collapse of the Old Kingdom, many scholars believe that climate change in Africa and the Near East had as least as much to do with it. Changes in the patterns of monsoon rains over the Abyssinian Highlands caused widespread drought and a series of low Niles. Food production abruptly declined. Hot winds blew from the south for weeks at a time, according to some ancient texts. Sandstorms and dust storms hid the sun for days. And that is an interesting ancient text that they mention that. I'm sure sandstorms were frequent, but hiding the sun for days and days, well, maybe something else caused those. Just, it wasn't just a normal sandstorm. Already dry farms turned to dust. In some places, the Nile was so shallow that it could be crossed on foot. Drought and famine in the Near East drove bands of starving, desperate refugees to Egypt's borders, putting additional pressure on food and water supplies. But this place was inhabited in Neolithic periods, and there is some finds here. And I think that's what they were looking for. Some uh, early settlements, some simple stone enclosures when they came across this meteorite. And this event happened very recently, and this is what it says. 
By the end of 2008, Dr. Vicenzo de Michel reported via satellite images on a large meteorite impact site named Camille Crater, 100 kilometers due east of Jebel Ulanat. In 2010, a ground check team of researchers confirmed the impact event and suggested that it may have occurred between 2,000 and 5,000 years ago. What concerns us as scientists here is the terrible effect of the event. The event was in the form of a relatively large asteroid fragment accompanied by a huge fire when it crashed in the region. The projectile exploded on impact with the sandstone bedrock and created a crater that was 45 meters in diameter. And we'll take a look at that. But this crater, 45 meters across, it is relatively small for a crater, but it's well preserved and they know it's fairly recent. And there's some hints of it from ancient text. But what really caught my eye is the object that exploded here was probably a meter by a meter, roughly in size, about maybe 10 tons. But this appeared to be a widespread catastrophic event in the region. So I thought I should go in search of some other impact craters to see if this was like a Tunguska type event or maybe many Tunguska type events. I had no clue, but it's something I thought I should follow up on. Only one individual fragment separated from the projectile before striking the ground has been traced due 200 meters due north of the explosion center. Here is a map. This in the very southwestern point is the Camille Crater. It says the area of the explosion was inhabited during the different prehistoric periods as human settlements are found close to the crater. There is no clear evidence that the event happened while sediments were occupied in the region. The event was surely of catastrophic effect on the region as a whole. Nonetheless, the shock waves burned all living creatures in a wide region surrounding the epicenter of the explosion. Sporadic traces of more ancient human settlements occur in the area for subsequent residents modified the desert landscape at many sites. They removed stone boulders from their original sites to create clat to create flat and clean spaces suitable as cattle and sheep farms, they arranged stone boulders in the form of circles. And that is one thing I really wanted to look for if there was any evidence of stone circles. It says, well-marked local trails run throughout the whole area. Ejected rock debris from the impact fell down on some of the trails. Evidence of the oldest settlements comes from observing a few Achillean axes in different parts of the area. There are also a few fragments of crude thick ceramic materials dated roughly as Neolithic. The stone circles are of different sizes, including small ones that could represent firing sites. So there was some stone circles found in the area and I found that to be an important thing because when you're looking on Google Earth, you need to take into account anything that could be a possibility for something you find. So there was stone circles in the area, but we're going to take a close look at Google Earth. And I think we have a bunch of impacts in one area surrounding the site here. It says reinvestigation of some ancient Egyptian legends may reveal ambiguous words that may refer to the fall of huge celestial stones in the south of Egypt. For instance, the R stone mentioned in the Horus War may indicate such a clue as legend states and Isis carried our stone of sand to Thest Hor, our stone of the star. Was it in the every place in the Southland to which Horus went? There is our stone found today. And it says the destruction of mankind legend, and I have made a video on the destruction of mankind legend from Egypt, mentioned in ancient Egyptian texts may refer to destructive forces of celestial bodies as it indicates that the god Ra became angry with man because he did not offer him the required respect. And also in the tale of the shipwrecked sailor, it talks of a huge celestial falling body, so those are not uncommon in ancient Egyptian text. But the R stone that is spread throughout southern Egypt in this text is it talking about this impact event? And remember, there are some objects found with later pharaohs that are actually made out of meteoric material. Did I say that right? Meteoric? But yeah, so that is a possibility. Maybe they knew of this and anything falling from the heavens would be considered a sacred object 
Did they know about this meteor that was scattered across the land here? They may have. But whatever exploded over the desert here, I think the Camille Crater is just one of many different impact sites in the region. And we'll show that on Google Earth. Now here is some rock art from the area, and they theorize this depicts an escaping man, and here clearly is a falling star or a celestial object that is coming down, maybe fragmented. It has many different tails here. But they theorize this is a running, escaping man from the celestial object. I say this could be Orion. It fits perfectly in Orion's posture in the sky. And I've talked about that many times. Pharaohs are depicted this way. This really confirms my notion that Orion was so important and the Pharaoh was associated to Orion in the night sky because Orion ruled over celestial chaos in the sky and really the chaos on earth and the main source of the chaos in the sky were these falling celestial objects that struck earth in ancient times and there's legend about it the people thought he protected the night sky the soul of the pharaoh from these falling celestial objects that created such devastation in ancient times but here is one example from the temple of edfu the pharaoh here striding left arm extended right arm in the air this is the same thing going on here about maybe 4,000 a little over 4,000 years ago arm extended that arm back striding I think it's the same thing going on here in southwestern Egypt as the mythology dictated in the land of the Pharaohs here I have mentioned this in videos this seems to be the time period at the end of the sixth dynasty where Pharaohs are praying to the god of the necropolis pepe and the last kings of the sixth dynasty are really they're making prayers in stone to the god of the necropolis anubis for help it seems to be a dire situation people are depicted as really really skinny and probably starving and then just a blank period of history and this is where the main god of giza changes from anubis to osiris a god of the afterlife because apparently something absolutely devastating happened at this time. Now let's go down to the very corner of Egypt here, and this is where the Camille Crater is. And I think they were looking for some simple stone ruins right in this area here when they came across this crater, and you really can't see it till you get right up close. But this is pretty pristine when you look at all the impact craters that are documented on earth and i think they dug this one the sand out of it and they found fragments of the meteor in and around here and you can see the ejector ray and that is very pristine as far as impact craters go but this is only 45 meters across and when i started looking in this area i was pretty shocked by what i found and you can tell by the place marks that I've got a bunch of different sites marked and I did mark all of them by far and also up to the north here possible impact sites some of these could have simple explanations but you can see here just some of this area kind of looks like the moon and Mars with all these circular formations but let's just look at a few of them here but some of them I have just put place marks some of them I have actually measured but here is one this is 250 meters across right here and the earth seems to be pushed up these aren't stone ruins and you see down here at the bottom there seems to be three rings that are exposed on the side and everything i know about looking for craters is this is possibly an impact crater in this region there's many of these elliptical type formations and these don't appear to be circles made by man just because the earth is kind of pushed up and here is another one this is 150 meters across there doesn't seem to be sand this central formation inside of this crater that is just a possibility here but here is a little closer look at it is that ejecta ray coming out of this formation this is just a possibility this is a little larger than a football field across here is another one this is a little bigger this is 400 meters across there seems to be a central formation 
and then the earth seems to be pushed up in a crater-like formation once again 400 meters across but I don't know some of these could be very ancient but the desert seems to swallow up smaller craters over 50 100,000 years they seem to be erased and that's what a lot of websites say but this is one of the best place as far as preserved craters the best place to go besides this you'd have to go to a place that doesn't have any atmosphere like a Martian or moon moon type surface but here you can see there are meteor craters or what appear to be this looks like the moon or Mars here there are so many circular type formations some of these may have a perfectly logical explanation but this place appears to be like Mars in areas here, maybe a half of a crater still remaining. That just screams out at me that's an old impact crater, and even a bigger one just to the right of it there. And here is a grouping possibility. Looks like these are young, recent, and then have just been filled by sand, and just the upper bit of the crater is left to be visible. That appears to be a crater to me, and here, here's a spot, appears to be much more ancient, but circular, and then a central dome in the middle of the crater, circle here, is that an ancient crater? That appears to be one. Here is another spot, and I think this is a few hundred meters across, but there are so many of these structures in the area. Here is another area, is this a dry lake from ancient times? or something else just so many questions in this area and sometimes you have to go from country to country to look at individual sites to determine if they're impact sites well this place just has hundreds of these what am I looking at I don't know but this one right here I want you to look at the southeastern side of this impact crater here obviously pushed up and this is just one of the clear indications of an impact crater and I think this is about 125 meters across but I, there are so many of these I just cannot mark them this one is only 36 meters across so there are many just tiny impact like crater structures in this area and here is one central dome formation middle of crater is this one from who knows how long ago or did many of these happen at the same time I wonder Here's another impact site. Looks like something splashed down here in the desert. Here are some more things. This site looks like an ancient crater right here. But I've heard Randall Carlson talk about impact sites that line up right in a row on the moon, and I've seen him show them. I'm sure I have. That was Randall that talked about those. Here you see a circular crater right here, the remnants of one, another one right here, a clear one right here, and then a big one right here. And I don't think these are very wide, more than a few football fields across, but this just seems to indicate something hit the earth that was fragmented. Now in the time period after the crater was discovered and the meteorite fragments located, this region was closed by the Egyptian government and it seems meteorite fragments flooded the market and this whole story started getting a little weird but here it looks like this is a crater and then it was dug up were the Egyptians out here or somebody out here collecting just tons of meteorite fragments from different craters that is a possibility I cannot dismiss but everything I have read did an event happen here that is pretty significant that we just haven't really spotted yet or put everything together well we know the Camille crater is a relatively young one and there's certain evidence that puts it about 4,000 years old and it matches up with some ancient text some ancient rock work other legends from around this area of the world that says something bad happened from the sky here in this area about a little over 4,000 years ago but I really encourage you to look around this area because I think there are impact craters here at least some of these are and I have shown the clear evidence if you look for impact craters of Egypt there is only two listed with the Camille crater being one of them
but I think there is a good possibility that some of these impacts are from the very same rock that formed the Camille Crater, the one that we know about, we have documented, and seems the Egyptians hinted about it in their ancient rock work, in their ancient text. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.